So, so our second snippet looks at um, some of the specific foreign policy crises of the of the Reagan administration, and the the the, the first was um, was in Poland. Remember, Poland is a satellite country of the uh, Soviet Union. Um, but there's one area in which Poland is is different from the other East European countries that that are under Soviet dominance, and that is that um, the the Catholic Church in Poland remains largely independent of the Polish uh, uh, government. The, the Soviets essentially took over uh, uh, the religious institutions in, in the other East European states. And in 1979, the, um, uh, the Catholic Church elects as its new Pope, um, a, a bishop from Poland who takes the name John Paul the, the II. Um, he's charismatic, um, very, very conservative on, uh, on social issues, very strongly anti-communist, um, extremely popular for uh, understandable reasons in Poland, which is an overwhelmingly Catholic uh, uh, country. Um, he travels to Poland. He's, he's greeted, uh, you know, rapturously. Um, and there's no equivalent for this in the um, in the communist world. You have this non-communist figure who gets genuine popular support. At the same time that John Paul emerges onto the scene. Um, there are strikes that are occur in, uh, in Poland and the creation of the first independent labor union in, uh, in Eastern Europe. I mean, it is one of the ironies of this period that these supposedly workers, democracies, and yet they suppress uh, uh, workers as well as everyone else. Um, the, the labor union is called Solidarity. Uh, the head of the union uh, is this man like Valenza. Um, and in 1980 uh, and into 1981, it, it appears possible that the Polish government is going to crumble from, from within. Um, and in 1981, the, the, the Soviets basically give the Polish military a choice. They say, you know, you can take care of solidarity or we'll take care of them for you. Um, and so in 1981, there's essentially a military coup in, in, in Poland. Uh, this man, uh, uh, General Jaruzelski, uh takes over as the new head of the Polish Communist Party. He declares martial law. Um, Valencia is placed under arrest. A uh, uh, number of Catholic priests are, are as well. Solidarity is briefly uh, uh, suppressed, but they never quite are able to you know, put the genie back in the uh, in the bottle. And there's strong rhetorical support on Reagan's part for um, uh, for the Polish uh, resistance. It, it 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 reinforces his argument that, uh, as he says in a, uh, an address to the uh, House of Commons in the United Kingdom, very famous. Uh, 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 speech uh, that the Soviet Union is an evil empire. Um, and, you know, this is the the, the Reagan uh, concept. Reagan is also on the lookout for a way to more forcefully strike back against uh, uh, communism in the third world to sort of show that the United States is back, that that the the perceived weakness of the Carter administration has been has been set aside. And he eventually um, focuses on this tiny island in the the Caribbean called Grenada, a former British colony, um, which had become independent in the 1970s. Uh, um, there are a series of, uh, of, of, of coups in the late 70s and early 80s, um, but eventually the, uh, the government comes under the uh, sort of hardline uh, uh, Marxist regime uh, that is uh, uh, so, uh, affiliated with Fidel Castro's uh, government. And so the Reagan administration argues that what's going on here is a a, um, uh, you know, a, a, an expansion of Castro communism in the Caribbean. Uh, and in 1983, um, Reagan uh, uh, decides to send U.S. troops, uh, U.S. Marines to occupy Grenada to get rid of the communist government and also to withdraw um, from, from the island um, uh, several hundred uh, U.S. medical students who were attending medical school in, in Grenada was one of these Caribbean uh, medical schools. Um, the New York Post has always approached this with great nuance in terms of its uh, uh, analysis. Um, but the, the argument that the, the Reagan administration made is that these that the communist government was was essentially a terrorist government, that, that it was threatening these American uh, uh, students. The evidence for this was very uh, skimpy. Um, but also, and here the evidence was stronger, that um, uh, the, the, the 
the Cubans were preparing to use uh, Grenada as, uh, as a military base in the, uh, in the Caribbean. This is extremely popular in the United States for unsurprising uh, uh, reasons. US casualties are very small, um, and there's a perception that the US has, asked, has acted forcefully against the, uh, the communist uh, threat. The, the flip side of this uh, comes comes in Lebanon. Um, th there are complicated series of, uh, of developments in, in Lebanon. Those of you who follow contemporary Middle Eastern affairs, Lebanon remains a very divided state. Um, but by the early 80s, Lebanon was what uh, some political scientists called a, called a failed state. That is that there, there, was, there, was, a, there was a border. Um, there was a uh, nominally a central government but no one was really in charge in the country. Um, Israel had invaded Lebanon. There is a, 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 there's a backlash against that uh, in, uh, in the West, in the UN, and eventually there's an agreement for a multi-party, uh, multi-power international force to allow the Israelis to withdraw, um, allow pal the, the leadership of the Palestinian uh, political organization, the PLO, to, to get out of Lebanon and go to, go to uh, uh, Tunisia in, in, in Northern Africa, um, and uh, to, to sort of create this situation where um, the, the uh, multinational force would bring a degree of stability back to, uh, to Lebanon. This was not a well thought out uh, uh, policy. Uh, the U.S. troops were stationed in this building in, in a, um, a hotel near the uh, Beirut airport. There had been a civil war in Lebanon for the previous seven years. By this point, the, the, the airport was no longer really uh, uh, functioning. Um, and uh, the, uh, the barracks are attacked uh, in a terror attack uh, by a suicide murderer um, in, in one of the early signs of, uh, of Hezbollah, the, uh, uh, the uh, the movement that is still around in uh, pro Iranian movement that's still around in uh, in Lebanon. Th this was, to put it mildly, a policy failure by Reagan. The the uh, U.S. intelligence had badly underestimated the possibility of of a terror attack. The, you know, the these troops are 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 sadly they're they're dead left almost unprotected. Um, and in the aftermath, Reagan very quickly pulls out the remaining troops. At which point, Lebanon entirely collapses into a failed state uh, status. There are a number of Americans who happen to remain in the country, in a couple of cases, CIA operatives, in other cases, uh, you know, people engaged in business, one, uh, one, uh, some, some educators, there's an American university in Beirut, um, who are taken hostage um, uh, by pro-Iranian uh, forces. Um, the Beirut airport becomes a kind of international no man zone. There's this very famous institute where, uh, episode where a TW uh, 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 TDW is a big U.S. airline and the uh, sort of a, a legacy airline um, that we, they eventually will go bankrupt, um, but um, they had lots of international uh, routes. Where a TWA airport uh, a plane is is, um, is is taken hostage, um, flown to the Beirut airports. There are a series of demands. This, this famous photographs with one of the um, uh, the terrorists, you know, holding a gun to the head of the um, of the pilot. Um, the the idea of terrorism remains very much in the milieu in, 19, in the nineteen. Uh, 80s, even though the Iran hostage crisis has um, uh, has come has come to an end, uh, and Reagan's response to terrorism is 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 not particularly uh, effective. Um, he, for for quite understandable reasons, feels very deeply the plight of the Americans who are taken hostage in uh, in Beirut. His administration pushes very strongly to bring them home. This is a photograph of of Reagan and Nancy Reagan with Terry Anderson, who was the um, Beirut uh, bureau chief for the Associated Press. So he was a journalist. He was taken hostage. Um, he's held for uh, for several years as uh, as a hostage. It turns out that the administration gets the hostages uh, the hostages in in Lebanon released by secretly funneling arms to the Iranian regime, with whom the U.S. had no diplomatic relations at all, and and which Reagan had described as a as a hostile state, which of course it was. Um, the Iranians were fighting Iraq in the 1980s. Most of the Iranian military at this time had been inherited from the Shah uh, 
Um, so U.S. Uh, supplies were were particularly valuable uh, uh, to them. But Reagan kept this covert, so it was it never made it into the public that the United States was uh, was supplying uh, supplying assistance. This becomes then tied up with another foreign policy episode, and this is in Nicaragua. Remember the from the first snippet, the, the Sandinistas, this, this Marxist force, had taken over Nicaragua. In the 1980s, the Reagan administration under, under uh, uh, CIA Director William Casey um, launches a, a campaign of covert assistance, which very quickly becomes non-covert. Um, to, to aid um, uh, anti-communist, anti-regime forces in Nicaragua, who eventually come under the, the, the sort of uh, nom de guerre of the Contras, just literally against, it's, it's not a particularly you know, progressive uh, group. Um, and But as you can see from the map, uh, the Contras take over at least a chunk of Nicaragua during the 1980s. There's a kind of low level civil war that occurs uh, throughout, the, um, throughout the decade. This war is very unpopular. The Contra war is very unpopular in the United States. There's a fear that this will lead to another Vietnam. It's only a decade after Vietnam. It's very, very unpopular with Democrats in Congress. And they unite under an amendment sponsored by this man, Ed Boland, uh, B-O-L-A-N-D, who was a congressman from Massachusetts, um, to cut off all aid to the, uh, to the Contras. Um, and so Reagan has this, this situation. You know, there's... He wants to keep aiding the Contras, but the Congress has told him told him no. He he's pressing his advisors to you know, say, come to me, you know, give me some uh, some guidance. And eventually, the administration comes up with this utterly harebrained uh, scheme, coordinated uh, through the office of this man, Oliver North, who was the the number two staffer in the National Security um, uh, 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 Advisors Office. Um, to, to pair two covert operations into, uh, into one. So remember the US was selling arms to the Iranians um, to, uh, to uh, persuade the Iranians to get the, uh, to release, to, to use their influence with Hezbollah to get US hostages released in Beirut. What North proposes um, to his, his superior, a man named John Poindexter, whether Reagan knew of this is, there's no evidence that he did, but the evidence that he didn't is, I think, pretty skimpy. Um, uh, North proposes, says, well, we're, we're, they were technically selling these these arms to the Iranians. He says, why don't you, why don't we just double the price of the uh, of, of the weapons and the 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 list price will go back into the U.S. Treasury. So we're we're doing this legally. The remaining pro, the remaining money will be um, you know sort of take you know. Sort of move to the side, put in a Swiss bank account. Um, and then, it's, then he says, we can give the, the Contra leadership the, 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 the password to the Swiss bank account and they can withdraw the, uh, the funds. What could possibly go wrong with such a scheme? Um, the, the, you know, this is kept secret for around a year. Eventually, it comes out. Um, it, it's originally broken in Beirut that the U.S. In a, in a newspaper in Beirut that the U.S. was selling arms to hostages. And meanwhile, one of the people who was who was running guns down to the uh, Contras in Nicaragua and it's a, a, a CIA front company, his plane crashes in Costa Rica. So eventually, this becomes a major scandal called the Iran Contra scandal that consumes the last two years of the Reagan uh, administration. There's one other aspect I think that's, that's sort of worth commenting on because we read the article on U.S. policy to its out in the in the 1970s. Reagan, in his final two years in office, largely due to the the workings of his second Secretary of State George Shultz, moves towards a more moderate approach regarding right wing authoritarian regimes. Remember, there had been this debate about this. And Jean Kirkpatrick had said, you know, we should be backing these right wing governments. Shultz eventually comes around to the uh, to the line of argument, and I think he was correct here, that um, it, it's not in the U.S. self-interest to back regimes like the Pinochet government in, in Chile or a similar uh, authoritarian government um, headed by a man named Ferdinand Marcos in, in the Philippines, um, that even if they maintain power, uh, Schultz argues, in the short term, in the long term, they tend to radicalize the political system. It's going to be more likely that there'll be an anti-American government that will, that will come to power. So in the late 1980s, the U.S., Basically, it, it steps back from supporting the, uh, the, the, the Pinochet government. It makes clear that the U.S. wants at least some degree of democratic reforms in, uh, in Chile. And so Pinochet, under, uh, under heavy outside pressure, 
um, agrees to a uh, to a compromise, and the compromise is not you know he's not he's not willing to legalize other parties, um, but he he writes a a new constitution that will allow him to stay in power for another uh, another several years, uh, and puts the constitution uh, up for a, a a popular vote, um, and the vote is is either yes or no, so it's not a party uh, election. And what he assumes, not unreasonably, is that in this kind of procedural election with the government calling for a yes vote, um, the yes vote will, will pass. And what happens is there's, a, there's an organization that is uh, mobilized called the Committee of the No, um, uh, it, whose, whose front tends to be women. So it's, it's much harder for uh, Pinochet to attack these people as sort of left-leaning Marxist types. Um, and particularly women who, and this is what the photograph I have on the left is one of the protests, um, women whose, whose sons or husbands uh, or brothers were murdered um, by the 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 you know, sort of Pinochet right wingers uh, in the aftermath of the of the coup, and this is a, a a movement. This this is a campaign that gets some covert assistance from the U.S. There are a lot of U.S. political consultants who help them. They wind up running an, running an extremely significant campaign, and an extraordinary political triumph because the all of the you know, the government was pushing for this yes vote the no vote uh, uh, prevails and Pinochet eventually will, will be forced to leave office he 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 won't leave office until there's a new constitution that basically protects the military from prosecution. But nonetheless, it is a remarkable shift. Reagan had come into office as this, this uh, candidate who was going to be backing these right-wing hardliners internationally. And by his, the time he leaves, he has largely, not entirely, but uh, largely changed his mind on the, uh, on the merits here. And that's our second uh, uh, snippet.